Hi class, I wanted to do a brief video just kind of talking about what I think is the best way to learn and memorize hormones because when you're studying for the endocrine chapter, this is probably, I mean, it is the most important part and takes up the most information from the chapter, but it's also the thing that's going to be the hardest is trying to keep track of all of the hormones and what they do. So you can almost think back if you, uh, when you took the bone test, there's just a lot of memorization. You had to spend a lot of time with it. And it's gonna be the same thing here with the hormones. And so the kind of analogy or the studying framework that I like to teach my students to do that I think is the easiest because it gives you some sort, of, some sort of way to conceptualize and organize the information is when I talk about writing you're are writing the hormone story. So each of these hormones, think of each of these uh, hormones like a character in a story. And if you think of all the great works of literature, of course, like Harry Potter is something that, that comes to mind because you have a very uh, distinct character, but obviously any story has a, a main character and these characters go on journeys that they have a purpose. <clears throat> you think about it, each character comes from somewhere. Uh, if you think about like sort of the classic rags to riches story is that so here's a character who comes from poverty uh, and then he decides that he wants to do something great with his life and so he decides to go to college and then what is he going to do when he gets to college he's going to get uh, a medical degree and then you can kind of once you answer those three questions you can kind of look back and go why did he leave in the first place. <clears throat> well, he left because he was tired of seeing his mother drunk on the couch every night or whatever it was. So all of this creates the story of that character that of course invests you in that character and it's why characters are memorable. And obviously we wanna make hormones memorable. So when you look through these questions, I want you to study and to learn the hormone but I want you to study and learn the story of each hormone. So each hormone comes from somewhere. Who releases it? Is it the anterior pituitary gland? Is it the pancreas? Is it the thymus? Is it the testicle? Where is that hormone going? Remember, each hormone is a chemical messenger, so it's targeting something. So where is it going? And then what does that hormone do when it gets to its destination? Remember, it's turning on something or it's turning off something. It's causing the release of something or causing the absorption of something. And then you can think back, why was that hormone released in the first place? Because remember, when you think about the function of your hormones, it's all about like, getting your body into or keeping it in or getting it back to homeostasis. So when you think about why was that hormone released, the question you're really asking is what caused that release or to think about it, what problem is that hormone fixing? And so oftentimes, if you can answer Question three, what does the hormone do when it gets to its destination? You can figure out why it was released because it's just the opposite. So for instance, if insulin causes, if, it, if insulin targets the cells of the body to take in glucose, to absorb glucose from the blood, will you just flip it? Because if that's the homeostatic fix is to take in glucose from the blood, absorb glucose from the blood, well then it tells you what problem is insulin fixing? Well, it means that glucose was, the glucose level was too high in the blood. Do you see that negative feedback loop? So it, the problem was that glucose was too high. Insulin targets the cells to absorb gluco glucose, therefore lowering the blood glucose level. And like I said, it just all comes back to that ultimate goal being homeostasis. And so you're thinking about those negative feedback loops. So now I want you to practice one. So I would say pause the video so that you can give a chance to try to answer this. So use your book, use whatever resources you are, and write the story for the hormone uh, ADH, anti-diuretic hormone. Okay, of course, I'm going to answer these questions uh, right now. So like I said, make sure you pause the video and give yourself a chance to answer these before you just hear me do it. So I want you to practice this. 
And now when you do these questions, you're going to realize that the answers can get very, uh, not necessarily complicated, but they can become very detailed depending on how you want to answer it. So let's write the story for antidiuretic hormone. Where does ADH come from? So ADH specifically is released from the posterior pituitary, but it is created in the hypothalamus. It's stored in the posterior pituitary um, and then released from the posterior pituitary, but is created in the hypothalamus. Where does ADH go? What does it target? Antidiuretic hormone targets the kidney, specifically the kidney tubules. And then what does ADH do when it gets there? This is where the name ADH helps you. Antidiuretic hormone. So a diuretic is something that causes you to urinate more, to pee more. Well, ADH is an antidiuretic, so it lowers the amount that you pee, so it lowers your urine volume. Well, how do you do that? It tells the kidney tubules to absorb water as it passes through the tubules. So what does it do when it gets there? It tells the kidney tubules to absorb water back into the body as opposed to it leaving into the bladder. So now we think, why was ADH released? Well, if ADH causes you to absorb water, what would be a, uh, a problem, a condition where you need more water? Well, that's what we call dehydration. So for instance, if you are dehydrated, then ADH will be released and it tells the kidneys, hey, we're dehydrated, don't lose any water, absorb it. We also know that if you absorb water, your blood volume is going to go up. Blood volume, if blood volume goes up, blood pressure goes up. So then we can think, why was it released? If ADH causes your blood pressure to go up, well, then ADH could be released if your blood pressure had dropped. So once again, we're relating it back to that negative feedback loop and helping to maintain homeostasis. So I think if you do this for all of your hormones, you're going to be really well off in remembering the function of each of them. Not just the function, but also where does it come from? What does it do? And what's the problem that it fixes?